week from this coming Sunday, you guys have to turn in your full PHP website with all 10 functional requirements working. Uh, to complete that, I'm going to go through one of the requirements that most of you are going to have to fulfill, which is uploading files. So I'm going to show you in my Timex how I'm going to change one of the functional requirements, registration, and all the implications that that does that have including the implementation of uploading a picture so that's going to be the the main the main functional requirement change in my case it's going to affect the wiki it's going to affect the database it's going to affect the uh the php code absolutely everything so i'm going to walk you through the whole process and that's the same process that you guys should be walking through when there's a change in your functional requirement or there's an additional functional requirement that you gotta replace because one of them was not a good one or whatever okay twelve so you guys can benefit from it this coming week I have also shared with you guys a very short video lecture about MVC pattern frameworks that's what's coming up and I need you to start preparing about it thinking in the MVC pattern um, ideology or whatever so that when you guys turn in your PHP your final PHP version you're gonna have to rewrite the entire website all over again using an MVC pattern framework called cake PHP so make sure that you watch the video lecture and understand what is an MVC pattern framework and how we're going to be using it. So <coughs> we show the functional requirement registration to our one of our stakeholders. It could be human resources, it could be the CEO, I don't know. One of the stakeholders in the company that is the that is going to be the owner of the system that we're building. And it says, an employee must be able to register in the system before logging for the first time. Ten pieces of information will be asked from the employee. Well, the stakeholder said, eh, hold on a second, we need to be able to upload the picture of the employee registering. So, change a picture of the employee must be able to be uploaded to be uploaded okay so that's obviously a little twist in one of the functional requirements Currently, if you guys look at our functional requirement, and it's just a matter of taking a look at the picture of it, this is all we're capturing. Okay? So we need to be able to, somewhere in here, and notice that it's going to, it's a picture must be able to be uploaded. It doesn't say every employee must have a picture. But if they do, they should be able to upload it. So the picture is going to be an optional 11th item in the registration, but we should be able to give the ability to do that. Okay? So I'm going to put it somewhere between, since it's going to be optional, I'm going to put it in this section of the address city state probably right above the address okay now typically how do you ask for a picture from a website you say okay picture or uh, I don't know 
yeah, picture of the or photo of the employee, whatever you want to put in there. That's a description of it, right? And then you provide a box where the user can input the name of the picture. Better yet, typically there's a button called the Browse button that when you click on it, it launches the operating system. And it doesn't matter what operating system you're working on. It launches the operating system file manager system which allows the user to go into anywhere in the file system and look for that photo picture that he or she is trying to upload. And you will select that file and say OK or upload or open. I, I can't remember. It depends on the operating system too. And then that box gets populated with that full path. OK? And that's going to be one more item that we're going to be inputting as part of the registration. So we fill out the rest of the registration, we click on register, and we should be able to, just like we save the name, the password, and all this stuff, we should be able to save in the database the name of the file. Not only that, we're going to have to be able to upload that picture wherever it exists and upload it to Apache. Because now Apache is the owner of that picture. Somewhere when we ask in any page for the profile of the employee or whatever, we sh Apache should be able to access that file and show it to us. Okay? Apache is not going to go to the user's computer and look for it anymore. It's going to have to look at it locally for Apache, the web server. So those are the main changes. Okay? So let's let's do that change. For, so from the from the HTML perspective, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an HTML, then it's going to look like this. Here it is. Sort of, kind of, right? So I have the same stuff I had before, but now I have a browse button that when I click, it uploads, I mean, it opens the file system manager. That's all it does. And it's going to save the picture file path, whatever I select. So if I go into my C colon WAMP, www, timex PHP, I should be able to select my picture. Right? And then I click open and then the full path or the name of the of the um I'm sorry, the name of the picture shows up in there. Right? Now how do I tell? Because keep this in mind. When you say that the file name of the picture is silhouette.jpg, that doesn't mean you actually have the picture. You only have the name of the file of the picture. So somehow you're going to have to tell Apache, hey, by the way, I need you to grab that file, stream it up all the way to the server, and save it somewhere in your file system. Okay? And, and and if there's two employees with the same file, let's let's say that I'm registering and I my file name is Silhouette. And there is another employee that a week later is going to register with the same file name. And it's very seldom but it could happen. Call Silhouette. Then that means that the file that the Apache web server is going to save locally on its file system, got to differentiate between the two. 
the first silhouette and the second silhouette. So we're going to modify a little bit the name of the file. Actually, we're going to keep the name and then we're going to append the timestamp, the now, date, time of when it's being uploaded. Okay? So, what are the changes? Let's see what this is, first of all. So let's open Firebug for a second. And notice that this is an input tag. It's an input tag, like the text box, like the radio button, like the select, like many of the input tags. But notice that it has First of all, what is its type? Is it text? No, it's file. That's what triggered the browser to say, wait a minute, I know exactly what you want. You want me to provide you with a browse button. And that the click of the browse button, it's all handled through the through the um, through the browser, will trigger the the open of the file manager system. And would allow me to select a file in the file man in the file manager system. And notice that the size, the size of that input is going to be 55. Or even though I'm going to allow a file name up to 75 characters long, it will only show the f first 55. Okay, that's what the size means and the max length means. What's going to be the name of my tag? my input tag, file. That's what it's actually going to get posted onto itself. Remember, it's going to post onto registration. Okay? What else? Do you guys think that w is there's going to be a change in the form? Yes, you're right. There is going to be a change in the form, and the change is as follows. If we don't change anything in the form, guess what Apache is going to do? It's going to grab the file name and it's going to do nothing with the file. It's not going to go and actually create a stream of bytes and retrieve the file. So we got to tell Apache, hey, this is a special post, okay? Because not only you're going to you're going to get all these values or in all those all these input values, you're also going to have to grab the a file and stream it up to the server. Okay. In fact, that's what this, that the browser is going to do. So, what change do we need to do on the form? The form, it's still a post, right? And still on the unsubmit, we're going to have to validate some stuff locally. The action is still going to be registration, right? But, it okay. An encoded type. The enc type attributes is supported by all major browsers is the encoded type. Basically, the encoded type is just text by default, unless you tell it otherwise. And in this case, we have to tell it otherwise. Why? Because it's picture text. No, it's binary, okay? And it's probably huge. So the browser is going to have to send a little bit of it, some part of it. Wait for a knowledge. Yeah, I got it. Send another part. Yeah, I got it. And keep uploading, streaming it up until the entire file, which is binary, gets uploaded. That's why the encoded type is going to be multi-part, and it's going to be form data. Form data and multi-part. That indicates to Apache that there's going to be an upload of a file. Got it? OK. So now let's walk through the changes. So now we have a change in my 
functional requirements. So I have created my HTML. What am I going to do? I'm going to take a picture of it. I'm going to take a picture of this guy. Snapshot. And I'm going to put it in my wiki. That's the first change that, so that it reflects what the new functional requirement will look like. Okay? And I'm not going to do it right now in front of you because it's time consuming and I want to get the uh, upload of the file done. So that's the first change. Second change. We're going to have to change the database. Why? Because now we need to save in the database the name of the file that has that picture. So if we go to the domain model, who is going to have the owner of that file name in my domain? Employee, yes. Employee, user, whatever. Okay? Employee. So employee, I'm going to have to add an extra field in here called file name picture or picture or whatever you want to call it. Okay? So let's do that. So we're going to have to go into the employee table and we're going to have to add that field. Right now I have address, city, state, zip code, pay rate, tax rate. Just add it at the end. Add it at the end. I have registration date as the last one. So I'm going to have that picture or whatever as the last one. So once you add that, it should look something like this. Now make sure that you add it not mandatory, meaning it can be no. All right? And that's especially true if if there is already data in the database. You cannot make it non null because otherwise the existing records that did, do not have any file name picture for the picture will have problems. Here it is. So now I call it file name. It's a new column. That could be empty. Very well. Okay. That was my second change. My SQL bench and create a new picture of the entity requirements. So I basically I will create a version four of this entity relationship diagram, right? That will have as part of employee will have that file name attribute. Second change. And now finally the actual code change. What do I have to change in registration? Well, the form that I just said, right? I have to add this new input tag and I have to actually add code that manipulates this file name and uploads the whole thing. So let's see how we do that. And I'm going to do the old version and the new version. The old version on the left, the new version on the right. Okay? So here is my form change. Before I had form, post, unsubmit, JavaScript, return validate, action, registration, PHP. I have the exact sa same thing except that now I have an encoded type multi-part form data. Fair enough. As part of my form, I have added this picture, input type file name. You guys already saw that. Okay? What do you guys think about the actual query that inserts a new employee in the database? Has to change, right? Why? It has to add this new field called file name. So this is the old query. And notice my changes. I added after registration date, I added this file name, right? And I'm going to populate it with dollar sign file name. So somewhere in my code, I'm going to have to create a variable called dollar sign file name that will contain the value of that guy. All right. I have also, oh, look at this. 
I have also before I was hard coding the pay rate to zero and the tax rate to zero. Okay. Now what I'm doing is, and this is an example of a hidden, hidden, hidden means it's an input that the user doesn't know that it's posting because it's hidden, but it will be posting. Okay? It's hidden. So it's an input tag, just like any other input tag, but its type is hidden. And you can say tax uh, pay rate is going to be $15 an hour and the tax rate is going to be 15% or whatever. Okay? Okay. So w what else? What what other changes do we need do we need to do? Well, the query, right? You understand why we had to do changes to the query, right? Because we have to add that file name as part of the registration. So what else did we have to do? Well, I have added a variable called file name, and I initially set that file name to blank. So I'm going to assume that the registration does not have a file name. And then I'm going to ask, with PHP, I'm going to ask if the post of file is set. Remember, that input of type file, the name is? The name is file. Right? So I have to ask if there's a post of file. If there's a post a file, that means the user uploaded a picture. What am I going to do? I'm going to tell it to require once and include of a PHP. This will actually contain my entire PHP code necessary to upload my file into the Apache Web Server. So let's take a look at that guy. I have put it in my includes, okay, and I call it the upload pick dot php. Let's open it up. It's not that complicated, guys. It's forty lines of code, and this is it. I create an array of the allowed extensions that I'm going to allow as pictures. So I'm going to allow JPEGs, full expel JPEGs, GIFs, and PNGs. Okay? It's just an array. Then I'm going to take the dollar sign files. Remember, we have a dollar sign post, we have a dollar sign get, we have a dollar sign session. There's something called the dollar sign files. What on earth is that? dollar sign files okay and it used to be called the HTTP post files but that's been deprecated I mean it's not used anymore it's an associative array of items uploaded to the current script and they've been uploaded via HTTP post which is what we're doing exactly okay so that guy will have the actual name, extension, everything that you need to know about the file, including the content of the file. Okay? Dollar sign files. So it's an associative array, so we're going to ask for the file name. Okay? And we're going to make sure that we escape it, just to make sure that there's no SQL injection in there or some, some funny security stuff. And then we're going to save it under the file name variable. What else? Then we're going to explode that name. What does that mean, explode? And we're passing a character to explode it. What do you guys think explode means? What is it going to do to the file name? Say, hey, explode this file name in the dot. Explode do I have that picture? Here it is. Suppose that name is silhouette.jpg. When you explode that, means you're going to break that string 
into its different components separated by a dot. So if you had silhouette.march.2013.jpg, it's going to create the explode of that. It's going to create an array that has silhouette march 2013.jpg. Okay? And you guys can actually, you know, do a search of explode, PHP explode, and that's what it's going to explain, obviously. So you're going to have it into file parts. And file parts is going to be an array. And then what are you going to do? You're going to, hey, give me the end. The end is the last one of that file parts. In fact, split the string by string. Right? So it returns an array of strings, each of which is a substring of the string that you pass, formed by splitting it on boundaries formed by the delimiter, which is the first string that you pass as, as a parameter. Okay? Now, it's an array of strings, so you can say end, and end is going to give you the last one. Okay? So you're going to take this array of strings called file parts, and you can say, hey, give me the end. And the end is going to be the last one, and that's going to be called the extension. Why? Because no matter how many dots that file name has, you know that the last one, dot whatever, is going to be the extension of the file. Okay? And then, what do you do? You're going to start interrogate, interrogating files about the type of the file. So, files is the file type an image GIF or an image JPEG or an image PNG or you know and you spell out the whole is this right image PJPEG yeah okay and what else notice this we're actually making sure that the size of the file is not that huge. We don't want a huge file. And, and somehow in registration, we're going to have to tell it, uh, like putting a, a, a little common label, whatever, saying, you know, max, what is this, 600 bytes? 600,000, that's what, 600K bytes? Or 512K bytes? Okay, so we cannot be bigger than that. So we make sure that the file type falls in all of these cases and that the size no longer than that. And what else? That the extension that we just calculated, right, out of the file name, is in the array of the allowed extensions. So in other words, it's either a JPEG, JPEG, GIF, PNG. If that all of that is true and passes inspection, then what are we going to do? Upload it. But before, actually at this point it's already uploaded, what is it going to do? It's going to ask, hey, did anything happen in the upload? Was any error any problem at all when you try to down when you try to upload it if it is then there's going to be a file error greater than than zero okay so files dollar sign files will tell you that if there was for that specific file if there is an error okay so remember in registration we have what where is my registration we have created an errors array, right? And if there's a username missing, we fill it out in the errors. If there's something wrong with the full name or the email or the password, whatever, we just put it in the errors. Well, we're going to do the same thing with our upload pick. We're going to say, hey, add to errors this. But suppose that it, everything went fine. It uploaded the file. Okay, and I have these echoes just for debugging purposes, obviously. Then what are we going to do? We're going to upload it to a special folder 
in our project. And that special folder is going to be called Uploads. Uploads, oops, in the wrong place. Uploads should be inside images. Okay? So inside our images folder, we're going to have a folder called uploads. And that's where we're going to store all the files that get uploaded by the registration. But we've got to ask if that file exists or not. Okay? So we're going to say there's a, a, a function in PHP called file exists that will tell you if a file exists with that name and that path. So you're going to go images slash uploads slash and then the file name that comes from the files. If it already exists, what are you going to do? You're going to say it already exists and put it in the errors. If it doesn't exist, then what are you going to do? You're actually going to modify the file name a little bit. You're going to take the file name from files and you're going to append to it underscore and then you're going to append the string to time. String to time is a function that takes the current timestamp from the system and converts it into a string. Okay? So we will be able to put it as part of the file name. And then, don't forget that, you want to be able to add the extension. If you don't add the extension, then the browser will not know how to render it. Okay? So don't lose that extension. And so we're going to have to append the dot and then the extension name to the file. And then finally, like every PHP functionality, we're going to have to call this move uploaded file. Okay? So the uploaded file, which initially was that file name, we're going to have to move it. Where? We're going to have to move it with this path. Images, uploads, new file name. Okay? And it's going to be moved from where? You guys remember when you download files, where does it go? In the temporary files, right? When you download CSS stuff, when you download uh, JavaScript, when you download pictures, they all get downloaded to the temp. Well, when you upload, that is on the server, okay, the server also has a temporary um, file folder. Temp, TMP, whatever. Depends on the operating system. Well, that's where it uploaded the file. Okay, your picture. So we need to move it from there. And we need to move it to this new path. Because that's where we need it. That's where we're going to expect to find it next time that we want to show it. That's what the Apache server did. So if you take a look at, if you do a search of move uploaded file, this function checks to ensure that the file designated by this file name is a valid uploaded file, first of all. So if first of all, it, it makes sure that this file exists. It's in temporary, right? Got uploaded. Meaning that the file was uploaded via PHP HTTP post. If the file is valid, it will be moved to the file name given by destination, which is where we want it. The images uploads. Okay? With the new name. You guys got it? And that's it. I mean, if the file is not any of these types, or it's too big, or it's not any of the allowed extensions, then you're just going to put into errors invalid file type. In, uh, in my WAMP, it would probably be this one. Who knows what that is? <laughs> Session. Okay. That's it, guys. That's 
it. So if the file is being posted, you just require that upload pic. It will execute the creation of the file name variable. It will make sure that it moved the file into the right place where we can find it later on. And that's it. You make sure that you save that file name in the database. So next time when you want to show that picture, you know that you have to go to Images, Uploads, and then grab the name from the database and you should be able to find it. Stuff like that. Okay? In this case, what's my default? Empty. If you want silhouette.jpg to be your default, then you can do that. Right? But then, what are you going to do? You're going to have to have an else in here. Because guess what? File did not get posted. That's something that the uh, that the user just omitted. So you're going to have to manually upload silhouette from where you ha where do I have silhouette? Wherever you have silhouette, typically you will have it inside your project. So here it is, silhouette, and that becomes your default picture. Okay? So you will have to call upload pick, but you will have to, uh, uh, actually you don't even have to do that. You have to just put silhouette in uploads. Right? Right? Put silhouette in uploads put in here the initialization of the file name, put it as silhouette.jpg, and that's what it's going to be saved in the database. Every user should have their own picture, but since we're not requiring it, it's not, it's not required to have it, it's optional, Alright, so now I have silhouette under uploads. So, my default will be silhouette. Silhouette.jpg. And in fact, be careful. If you are deploying this website, into a Linux server, the Apache in the Linux server is case sensitive as opposed to in the Windows server. In the Windows, Windows is not case sensitive, but Linux is. So silhouette.jpg will be different than this JPEG, which is the one that I'm using. So make sure you call it exactly the same. Any questions regarding uploading files? Okay, I'm going to take this new version of my Timex, upload it into Moodle. You guys can download it, play with it, okay? You can use the code. You can probably just literally copy upload pick into your project and use it. For next week, not this Sunday, but next week, following Sunday, I look forward to your full PHP website working. That's all I have for tonight.